Uh, okay, so my name is Heidi Moulton. I am the operations manager of Extreme OK Games, which is an indie game dev company. We are really small, basically just six people. And then, uh, what was the other question? I very forgot. Oh, the recent game. Um, we are working on Earthplay. We haven't released it yet. So the recent game would be Still Celeste. Uh, okay, what do you think makes a game marketable and should people even care? For making a game more ma marketable, uh, I'm trying to think, it depends on, like, I think everything depends on your final, like, who is buying your game, right? Because what makes a game marketable for audience B or A is not the same thing. Like, for example, for Celeste, we have an audience that we need to feed, let's say like that. And it's not the same audience as like, like of Wars, because this audience, they wish different experiences. Do you think uh, people should do or can do to put themselves more in the spotlight? Okay. I don't know, like, depends on if you are just starting or if you are ready working like making a game for a long time and it's not going nowhere like nobody notices you but depends on which point you are start starting so if you are starting as a student there are lots of opportunities because of course you are young you can like join companies and change companies like it's basically you can do whatever you want or you can even like join a company and make your own game when you have like your free time and then like work on both ends and see which end is better for you but if you are already like i don't know working in your own game for five years and then it's going nowhere i would say the the route that i see going well is like talking with people in person going to events networking because like the any industry is not only about the product that you have it's about one, having luck, and two, connecting with the right people. So we cannot like overlook that. Like you need to have good connections and you need to share like with these good connections that you made, like what you are working on and let them play the game, let them talk about the game, meet people from the press. So if you go to the game events, there will be people from everywhere there related to the game industry. So you can meet people from the press, put them in your game. You need to have those connections. If you are like stuck in home, being like, oh, I'm posting to on Twitter and nothing is happening. Why do you like, no, this is, this will not work. Yeah, oh Lord, <laughs> please save me from this pain. Like this will not happen because nowadays um, sharing stuff online and trying to get people to buy your game online just from sharing on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, it's kind of like really hard. Nowadays we have the algorithm that doesn't show stuff to anyone. Yeah, so before, back in the day, if you were posting something and you had like at least one follower, that person would for sure that you posted them. But nowadays, even if I follow you and you follow me, the posts will not show, right? Because it depends on the algorithm. Yeah. So it's really hard to just like having your your business being built online and not in person or like networking in events or that kind of stuff. So I, I would say like for sure go meet people and make connections and, and try your luck that way as well, not just online. And honestly, like nowadays, at least so far, Discord is a great tool for building a community better than the social media platforms that we have right now because at least people can talk and interact there and they will not like be seeing like ads and stuff and you know what i mean like it's better for building a community you on discord do you think you have any tips for students who want to get into the games industry or want to build their own uh, game studio 
Yeah, like, I think this is what I usually say and what I usually see my, my friends in the industry mentioning as well, which is like, if you want to work with indie games, would be better if you at least have like five or four study games that you make, because like, at least you know the process of building something from zero to the end. can be like small games, 30 games, but at least like try to build your own game. There are lots of tools online that you can use free, music free, sounds free, assets free, engines. You can do your every, whatever you want. As long as you just finish at least like four or five projects, that's something that I recommend because that way you can check like, do I like building games or do I like with like, do I like working with stuff related to games? Because for example, I made some study games and I realized I don't actually like building the game. So it's fun, but I don't want to work with this. I don't want to do this every day. This is something that is not for me. But I really like organizing stuff, dealing with taxes and numbers and spreadsheets and dealing with social media and checking what is popular right now. I really like that kind of stuff. So like I can work with games, but not like in the development itself. But there are other people that if they make a game, they can be like, oh, I really like creating the sounds for the game. I really like creating the music for the game. or I don't know, implementing the sounds, like, there are so many steps that you building a game, you can do it like this or that, like, you can at least have a sense of what you like and what you don't like. Just start, like, make your own games, your own small, like, small, please do not try to make, like, a, I don't know, an Overwatch game from scratch. This will not work, so please try making, like, at least for small study games to check what kind of stuff you like when making games. If you are working like with a team, like your friends at uni or anyone else, you can like, check with them like if you can manage the product itself. Like yeah, just like produce the game itself instead of being a developer. So yeah, making games would be a, a great start. I would say. What do you think? I were the teachers or you? <laughs> I think I'm in the opinion that if you want to get into the industry, it really just depends on what you want to do in the industry. Because there are people who fit working in companies and there are people who don't. And if you're yeah. not, you need to understand what kind of, where do I want to fit into this industry? And uh, am I more of a solo developer? Do I want to work as part of a small team? Do I just want to make the biggest thing out there with a team? Do I just want something stable? Like there's a lot of questions mm -hmm. you need to uh, figure out. And the position itself, I think most people will find themselves in something they naturally either are good at doing or like doing because we just can't get to stay away from it. Like if I yeah. don't like doing something, I'll find ways not to do it. And yeah. that's, uh, that's mostly my take, but a lot of uh, the people I've uh, interviewed don't have someone uh, in charge of the social and like everything related to that. And um, when you joined the team, what did you think was somewhat overlooked or that, and that you as like a socials and operations manager could have brought to the team that like other teams might uh, find useful, like to either know or uh, do like st stuff that they uh, overlook? Mm, I think like, for example, when I joined in 2017, there was like a kind of a prejudice against people that were working in the social media part or doing community. They were some people that would say, oh, this is not real game development. You are not like a game developer. But it's kind of like stupid for me because it's like the person is doing the marketing for you to sell your game to have like more people playing your game why you are like excluding what this person is working on saying that oh this is not game development like this is just like a team working to ship a product to have money right like we yeah. need money to survive so please stop being like this, like stop, like, you know what I mean? 
And I think if, if let's say somebody's right now, like your students making a game and they want to work with that for real and then yeah like there needs to be like someone doing the admin there needs to be someone doing the social media it can't be the same person but like having the same person developing the game making the art making the music making the sound making the trainer making the social media and managing the company itself like the all these seven roles in one person is really, really, really hard. So there, there are cases of like one developer made all of this stuff and took like eight years to ship the game or even more. But this is like, it's like something special, right? Like one person took like a long time to do all this work because they decided to. But honestly, nowadays, everything is so different than 10 years ago. Nowadays, like, there are lots of games every day. Like, lots of new games every day. There's social media. There's, like, lots of competition. The gaming scene is not the same as before. And now we have AI as well to make our art and other stuff. Even sound effects, music. The competition is even, like, fierce than 10 years ago. So I think they shouldn't overlook in at least having someone to help them like with the administration part and the social media part. Please have somebody do that because yeah, like if you make a, a mistake in the administrative part, it can cost you like sometimes like this, like let's say you you didn't pay a pack that you needed to pay, then it can cost like thousands, you know what I mean? Like so yeah. I think like people should take the admin part more. Yeah, so like admin part is like essential is the core of game development because at the end the game itself is a product and you need to manage the company really well otherwise the product will have problems later. Like it's they are not separate from each other.